Well, that, let's, let's look at the practice. As editor of WikiLeaks, uh, I'm very proud of three things. Uh, number one, uh, we've never got it wrong in terms of what we say uh, a document is, it is. What you, what you have printed, what you have revealed yeah. has never been... Never, never, never been intended years. fake and not even is there any outstanding allegations okay. of this. Okay. Uh, number two, we have never revealed one of our sources, ever. Uh, so that's a Today you can reveal the source of, of, of the Podesta emails, that would, be, that would make a lot of news. Yeah, and that would be getting into WikiLeaks. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. So, uh, and, uh, but you did say it's not Russia, That's, and you don't like to say that. We have a, a, in the past occasionally on particular issues wh where we think that, you know, uh, there's a distraction from the publications that's so severe that we have to kind of distance ourselves from it and, and prevent, prevent a vacuum, basically, being filled by any old rubbish. Okay, so to that. Number three, what are we proud of? Uh, we are proud that uh, there's not a single instance of anyone coming to physical harm as a result of our publication. Let me ask you, have you made conscious decisions as the founder and editor to withhold information because you, you, would, you thought the release of such information would result in somebody's death? Uh, in other words, mean no, methods... Where, where, the, where we, we thought there, there was a... A, a significant risk. You're very conscious of that. Yeah. But and that's we're a, conscious that's of that. an ethical standard for you. Yes, and so, but we're always transparent about it, okay? You'll say that you're not... We say, we say uh, we're withholding this piece of information for a limited time until such time as we think uh, that there's not a significant risk that someone might face retribution. Mm -hmm. We're totally transparent about it. So, unlike other media organizations, you just see and huge reductions with no explanation as to why what has been, uh, why uh, that information has been redacted or been withheld. And I can tell you that I know from practice, having having dealt with more than 110 different media organisations in collaborative partnerships, uh, that very often information is withheld for political reasons, and it is then passed off that it is being withheld uh, in order to uh, protect individuals. Uh, so it's redactions are deeply corrupting, uh, and we are fighting to set a new standard. You're describing the New York Times. You're describing yeah. ABC, NBC, CBS, Politico. You're describing the mainstream media in America. But these uh, uh, and and we, we had WikiLeaks has shown us. We had similar problems with uh, the Guardian, uh, Le Monde, in London, El Pais. Now there were also fine journalists who did good work. And so it's not everyone, uh, but there were critical cases where information that we shared in a partnership agreement under the basis that would only be redacted for human, ri human rights reasons, you know, protecting someone's life, uh, was redacted to protect um, oil companies working in Kazakhstan or Yulia Tymoshenko, uh, the former leader who's accused of all sorts of murders uh, in Ukraine. So yeah, uh, here's the basic problem with censorship. Once again, it creates an opaque system where people can't see what were the reasons for the censorship. You know, you know uh, in the justice system we say there must be open justice for there to be justice. The, the judge, while trying, must themselves be tried before the public. Is it fair to say? It doesn't happen when, it doesn't happen when a media organization is engaged in just sweeping things under the rug. Is it fair to say that WikiLeaks is more interested in government corruption that's impacting the lives of people, not superfluous, um, uh, scandalous lives of, of big stars? Yeah, well, we, we don't publish it. We don't publish it. Don't publish it. Right, let me, we, I think, let uh, me ask this. We, have, we haven't actually been, I, I'm not sure we've ever been put in a position where we've had right. to make that determination. Because that's not what you do. Those people go to TMZ, for example. And coming up, Julian Assange has not stepped outside the Ecuadorian embassy in London since 2012. Up next, I'll ask him about the controversial details of his confinement and much more. Straight ahead.